Coca-Cola Company, Cure Dr. Pepper, and PepsiCo are bringing consumers more choices with less sugar than ever before. From sparkling, flavored, and bottled waters to zero-sugar sports drinks, teas, and sodas, consumers are taking advantage of these choices. In fact, nearly 60% of beverages sold contain zero sugar. To learn more, visit balanceus.org. Welcome to the Awakening Women podcast. I'm your host, Leanne Oten, and former therapist with a background in counseling psychology. This podcast is for strong, high-achieving women who want more in their lives and relationships, who are ready to rise to the next level of growth, healing, and evolution. Nothing changes until you change. And when you change, everything else changes around you as a result. If you're done with feeling powerless within the chaotic and toxic dynamics in your relationship and don't even know where to begin with making changes, I've got you covered. I know you've tried everything, including counseling, watching hours of videos and reading stacks of books on narcissism and find that all it does is leave you feeling even more stuck and in the same place. None of these things work when you're living with a narcissistic spouse because the root causes of the symptoms are not being addressed. As with physical health, there is an emotional, physical, spiritual, and psychological component to healing and overcoming the problematic symptoms and pain you're facing every day in your life and relationship. If you're ready for a direct, no fluff, no nonsense approach to take you into your personal power and take back your life. You are in the right place. Let's get started with today's episode. Hey ladies, in this quick episode, I wanted to touch on something because I get a lot of DMs and of course I see patterns with women that I want to bring to light here on the podcast. So one of the things is women wondering if they're too sensitive. So I want to talk about sensitivity, number one, and also how does that relate to our relationships when we are sensitive? So for me, I talked about this on the podcast quite a while back about protecting your sensitivity, especially if you're a highly sensitive person. So that is actually... You can actually look into that and take online assessments to find out if you are a highly sensitive person or HSP. And for me, many, many years ago, a therapist bringing this to light to help me understand myself better. Like, yes, I am very sensitive. I am. (laughs) And I would say maybe even high maintenance. I am. I require certain things to feel okay. And I've had to learn how to be a little more flexible in that and realize that I can't have control over every single thing in my life, but I am very sensitive. And so how does us being sensitive pertain to what we tolerate in relationships, right? So usually it starts off in our childhood. If we were told by parents or our feelings were made moot, if we were belittled for our feelings or made to feel like our feelings were too inconvenient or whatever by our parents or that they just didn't matter, Um, And then we end up in relationships where we are also treated that way and we are told we're too sensitive or too this or too that or crazy or reading too much into things. With all that combined with our inner programming, we start to ask ourselves, am I just really too sensitive? Like, am I making too much out of this? And this won't just happen in our intimate relationships. You'll notice this is true across the board with friendships or whatever, but it is more Uh, potent, I would say, in intimate relationships, especially if you're with someone who does not honor your sensitivity, doesn't give a shit how they treat you or make you feel, has no respect for you, walks all over you, takes you for granted, takes advantage of you, manipulates, gaslights, all of that. So when you have your sensitivity coupled with someone like that, it is a recipe for disaster. And this is why I've been saying all along is you have to detach from the relationship and start living for yourself. You have to stop letting a man be your universe. I don't care if you've been married to him for decades. It's about deciding, I am. I have made this man my entire universe, or any man, right? If it's a pattern for you to drop everything and cater to a man, you have to heal that within you so you don't end up in another bad relationship down the road with someone who's taking advantage, someone who's lazy, someone who does the bare minimum, Someone that strings you along and becomes lazy and suddenly you're dealing with a man child again, right? We have to own our own patterns as to why we attract and keep these types in our lives. We have to take 
ownership. And this is the reason why I have pivoted what I'm talking about because I honestly am, I am just done with seeing women in these situations and they send me these long drawn out emails or posts on Instagram, um, uh, sorry, DMs. And it's just like horror stories and awful things. And then it's like, hey, well, here's a way you can work with me. And it's like, no, I, he's going to know that I am spending it or he controls all the money or I can't spend that right now or I'm saving to leave or whatever. But really, are you like, it just gets to the point where I realize like I cannot save everyone, no matter how low priced my courses are or what payment plan, there are going to be women that just want to stay in the story. They're not ready to take action. They're not ready to take accountability and do whatever it takes to get the hell out of the situation. And so I now want to speak to women and work with women who are in that camp that are done and they want to take self accountability and they want to heal and outgrow these types of relationships. It's breaking the grip of the past, breaking the grip of past relationships so that we can live our lives freely. We do know what feels good and what doesn't. And when it doesn't, we speak up or we walk away or we end things or we are able to deepen with someone that is able to meet us, right? But you won't know that until you start, well, until you stop making everything about your sensitivity. Maybe I'm being too sensitive when he's like throwing things and having a rage fest and cheating on me or whatever. Am I just being too sensitive? He's messaging another woman or whatever, like it's just, it's insane, right? It's pure insanity that we do this and we need to take ownership for our tendencies to do that. That is how we grow and that's how we heal. So what I've done is I've created a $19 mini course called, is he really that bad or am I too sensitive? And this goes further into covert abuse, um, all the signs, everything you need to know, how to know if you're being too sensitive or if you are sensitive and how to shift your mindset around that so that it's no longer something that you're using as a reason to tolerate being walked all over, being mistreated. So I, I go into all of it in the course. If you are constantly asking yourself, am I too sensitive? You're with the wrong person because they will never make you feel that you're being too sensitive. You know, there's a way to go about things like maybe you are very sensitive. I'm very sensitive to joking now because of all the the veiled jokes that were not nice, right? So I'm sensitive to that. I'm sensitive to um, feeling like someone is criticizing me or talking down to me or being passive aggressive whatsoever. I am sensitive to all that. Does that mean that I'm just going to put up with it and say, oh, well, I'm just too sensitive? Or am I going to say... Do I want someone like that in my life? Do I want to put myself in a situation where that is going to be what I have to live with and experience? That's what we need to be asking ourselves. Not, am I too sensitive? But, you know, asking ourselves the other questions, that takes courage. Looking at the fact that, well, instead of me just saying I'm too sensitive, and that's why I'm going to keep tolerating the cheating and the lying and the gaslighting and the, the crazy making, you know, it's to say, no, actually even if I am sensitive, or even if I wasn't sensitive, would I want this in my life? Is this the type of person I want in my life? And this can go with go with anybody, right? Friends and other family and, and even jobs or clients that you work with. So this doesn't just pertain to intimate relationships. However, when you start to do the work in your intimate relationship, it ripples out into all other areas. And you start to see where you have been betraying yourself? Where have you you been abandoning yourself and saying, I'm just too sensitive. I'm making too big of a deal of this. But if you were to actually tell someone what is happening, their jaw would drop or you get this gasp of like, what? We really have to take ownership for why we're allowing ourselves to think that it's okay to tolerate abuse and mistreatment and disrespect and aggression and a man yelling and a man freaking out that we're too sensitive because we don't like it because it makes us uncomfortable because it makes us clench and we feel fear and we don't feel safe with them. Why does that mean that the problem is your sensitivity? Just think about that. Isn't that ridiculous? I would never entertain having a single person in my life ever, ever again that made me feel 
like there was something wrong with me when I bring something to them about what they did that hurt my feelings. Never again. Not even a hint. Like it's not going to happen. It could very well be I have sensitivities from my past, but someone that loves and cares for me or you is going to see all of that and they're not going to want to be part of that pain. They're going to adjust and they will stop doing those things or they'll they'll make changes. That's all you need to know. So here's something you can do besides checking out the, the $19 course is write down all the ways that you think you're too sensitive. What are the last things that have happened with your partner or maybe someone else in your life where you, you chalked it up to, I'm just too sensitive. Write that stuff down. And then ask yourself, is that true that I'm being too sensitive or that I was being too sensitive in this? Right? Like what actually is the truth in this? And when you brought it to the person or your partner, what was their response? And we have to start standing in that instead of doubting ourselves And this is hard because then we're having to look at the truth. We're having to look at, I might not be able to have this person stay in my life. I will not be able to stay in this relationship. I'll not be able to keep seeing that person or spending time with that person. And then we have to deal with the grief and the loss and the, the, the outcome, the repercussions or whatever of that decision. And so when we don't have a lot of self-trust in our ability to manage things, we fear our ability to manage those emotions from breaking things off, ending things, leaving, um, distancing. So with the work is we have to learn to be comfortable and realize that we will handle whatever comes our way. And that helps us to have courage is to know that I know how to deal with my emotions. I know how to deal with crippling, like rock bottom level of grief. I know how to deal with those things. And so anything else that comes, we can deal with that, right? We can deal with that. And it does help to have support, of course, the right kind of support. So here, really, I just wanted to bring this different nuance to the conversation of, am I too sensitive? Maybe you are. Let's just say you're too sensitive. I'm probably someone you could say I'm too sensitive to things. I'm sensitive to room temperature, smells, stuffy air. I can get a migraine from being in a stuffy room. Uh, Overhead lighting that's really glaring and like the LED lights. I still have old school light bulbs because I don't like the LED lights. Um, Smells, scents. I can't wear anything artificial, really perfumey. I don't use any chemicals in my home. I'm sensitive to foods. I cannot eat shit foods because I will pay for it and I will feel it. My tummy will be upset. I can feel it. I'm sensitive to um, chemicals, alcohol, um, overstimulation. I can leave Costco or the superstore. I don't know if you have those where you are, superstore especially, but um, it's bright. There's always lineups. There's people everywhere. I get annoyed. I get super annoyed and overstimulated and I don't love being around a lot of people. I just don't. It's just, it is. It is what it is. Is it that I'm too sensitive and I need to suck it up and learn to like it? No, but in life I have to do these things, right? We have to go to the store. But like in a social situation, I will have a literal like wall that I hit and I have to get the hell out. (laughs) It's like my battery runs dry and there is nothing left. I had a recent experience of that and I had to just like get out of the room. It was like a whole bunch of different people talking really loud. They're drinking and it's just all you hear is the jabber of like so much noise. It was hot. (laughs) It was loud. And I just started to feel like I couldn't breathe. So I had to get up and go outside. So again, am I too sensitive? Everybody else in the room seemed fine. Nobody else was standing out there getting fresh air. Maybe I am, but I can sure as hell tell you, I will never be in a relationship with someone who makes me feel like it's a bad thing, right? It's it's something we have to honor within ourselves. And if you are with a partner or friends or family that love you and care about you, and you're also doing your work, right? We're not just going around like, oh, like having freakouts about our sensitivity. It's like, I just needed to take space. I'm not making this about you or making it your problem, but that was feeling overwhelming for me. What you said felt this way. I didn't like what you said about that or how you did that or whatever. 
It's being able to calmly and in a grounded, clear place to express and say what we need to the people in our lives and tell ourselves what we need and getting clear on what we need. What do you need? What are the parameters around how you like to be spoken to? Where's your tipping point to where it becomes like it's flooding you emotionally and you start getting triggered or you, you know, you're in a social situation and you just hit a wall and you need to get out. What kind of parameters around that do you have for yourself? So it starts with yourself first, because how is anyone else going to respect your sensitivity and your needs if you're not doing it? So this is part of a big part of the work, right? It's a big part of the work that I do with my clients is being able to honor your needs, honor your sensitivity, honor your feelings. And it's being able to say, yes, I am sensitive. And that doesn't mean that it's a free pass for people to walk all over me or to laugh at me or make fun of me or belittle my feelings, my sensitivity. I hope that makes sense. And I hope that this helps because I know that many of you here have asked yourself this question many times and we have to put this stuff like in the ground, like stop, stop making other people's behavior about you. This is exactly what we do when we've experienced violence is we do it to ourselves. So someone that is abusing you, how do they make it about you, right? An abuser's basic MO is it's not me, it's you. And you made me do it. And it's my behavior isn't the issue. Your sensitivity is the issue. So if you are believing that, then that's the first problem. That is the part that needs to be shifted, not his behavior, not what someone else is doing. Do you believe that you're being too sensitive? And if you do, then good luck. You're going to keep attracting users and abusers and manipulators and people who will walk all over you because they're like, oh, well, I can get away with whatever with this person because she's going to take all the fault. Perfect. So you see why the answer lies within you to learn what you need and start giving that to yourself first. So hopefully that helps and that makes sense and that gives some clarification on this whole am I too sensitive thing or is he really that bad maybe I'm misreading it blah 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 (laughs) so again comes back to self and if you are ready to do this work this deep inner work of healing this after you've left because I can tell you that doesn't matter when you come into a new relationship after you've left it's a like a landmine of triggers if you are not able to do this work because It's about healing these parts to be able to see and feel what it is that we want, what feels good, what doesn't, what's working, what's not. So if you are ready to do this work, I have some brand new coaching options as well as payment plans that can be extended up to 24 months to make getting the one-on-one support after you've left an abusive relationship or after you've experienced toxic relationships and you're ready to heal and rebuild your life. I wanted to make this more accessible to more women. And so I have put out a whole new coaching suite of packages, as well as I have some online self-help courses. So I'll put both of those links in the show notes of this episode. All right, take good care. Thanks so much for tuning in to this edition of the Awakening Women podcast. If you love this episode, please take a moment to share it and leave a five-star rating and review. If you're ready to take your next step, head to the link in the show notes to sign up for my latest free class. Also, be sure to follow me over on Instagram at Awakening Women Official and join the conversation. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll catch you again in the next episode. Take care of yourself in the meantime and I'll see you online.